Welcome back to the Speak Your Peace podcast. My name, Ian McNaughton, Big E here, wearing a college shirt, college sweater, actually. Uh, pleased to be joined by SYP creator, Scotty K. Scott, hi there. Hey. 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 You, come here, you come here often? Uh, once a week, apparently, because you, <laughs> you, you let me on the show. So, um, yeah, good. Thanks for, thanks for having me again. It's like I'm a regular guest or something, but uh, good to be back and good work. It's going to be a heavy-ish podcast in terms of content, but it is our last one for a while. So I uh, Yeah, we'll get into that later on. We'll, get the, we'll talk about that at the end here. Um, okay. Some people say that I'm just heavy in general, depending on who you ask. Um, although the, uh, the guy, the FedEx guy who I shared an elevator with this afternoon, he said, and I quote, you look like you're in great shape, man. Hmm. Maybe so, you just like huge and you hit the gym hard. I, it might have been because I was wearing like a bigger sweater today. Um, sure. So I'm still trying to drag out baggy hoodie season. So that might have been covering it. I was gonna um, say, I'd be getting pretty hot down in the lower mainland. Hot and it, it was pissing rain today, wind and rain. Oh, interesting. It was just mm-hmm. windy here, a little bit rainy, but mostly wind. I love how, um, first off, um, shout out to the FedEx. Uh, that guy should get a raise. And I love how, in like five minutes, not even, we've already managed to do our small talk about weather and uh, do you come here often? Uh, we are absolutely just, cr- this is podcasting 101, just crushing the small talk, getting that out of the way. Yeah. I was, I was going to ask you, um, this, this should actually be like a poll or a mailbag question. What is the most elite shipping company? <laughs> is it FedEx or is it Pure Later, UPS? It's not UPS. It's not UPS, okay. It's not UPS. Um, some might say DHL. I was going to, yeah, I was going to bring up that one. D- DHL might be the dark horse pick in the best <laughs> shipping uh, poll. Um Probably top five at least. You got you got to think DHLs in top five. Well, how many shipping companies in the world are there? Probably, I guess there's probably hundreds, but like the major ones. Um, I mean, are, are we just focusing on North American? Um, well, that's that's kind of why my thinking. Like, I don't know. Oh, I guess shipping. I should be more. I should be careful with shipping because shipping companies is taking me to like actual like shipping across the ocean type of companies. Yeah, that that the like, international waters type beat that we just we don't cover enough here on the podcast is shipping overseas. We don't. We, we, should, don't we do should that. Get, we should get into some uh, some in depth dive dive reviews on uh, famous shipping companies around the world. That would be that would be <laughs> start profi- be- start profiling like you know shipping companies and what they do, all, what all they ship. The process into shipping, I'm sure that's a real in-depth podcast. Yeah, that no, no one cares about Austin Matthews scoring 53 goals in a season. We want to know about shipping containers and what their what their specs are, right? Specs, okay. distance, yeah. logistics, you know. Yeah. It's, who, it's, who cares what Matthews can do in on a hockey on a hockey rink with uh, a stick in his hands? You never know. Who, who cares about the Masters this weekend? Um, you know, People just want to know what, you know, what DHL does to get from Vancouver to Singapore on a week to week basis. <laughs> Fair enough. We should talk about the Masters, though, because that actually is an important event. It is. It is. Well, we got that later on. Um, oh. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about uh, Canada World Cup. Qual- uh, we will, we'll talk about the draw because we missed out on talking about qualifying last week for the World Cup, but they had the draw this week. So we'll make up for that. Yeah. Um. We were going to lead in with March Madness. The game is still going on. So maybe we'll save that a little bit too. This, this agenda is really just, you know, just nailing everything so far. Oh, yeah. Um, let's do our hockey talk. We, we had uh, some hockey talk lined up. Not, hon- not always, honky tonk compared to. We always to the, do when I'm on the podcast. So, yeah, let's bring it. Yeah, not to be confused with honky tonk, um, one of my favorite Rolling Stones songs. Um, by the way, shout out to you for using Def Leppard in Saturday selections. Was not expecting that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you and I have been talking about the last few weeks about teams that we don't talk about. How we need to talk about teams that we don't talk about. So this week, uh, our 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 NHL our hockey segment is talking about teams we don't talk about. That's not confusing, right? That makes sense. 
Uh, you're nodding, so I'm going to yeah. say that. Yes. Yeah, okay. we're, you know what? We're going to fill in the gaps this week. I think this is a, I think this is a good podcast, you know, kind of end. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good, yeah, good chat about hockey. Let's talk, who are we talking about? I don't know. So I have seven teams that I think we should discuss. That's a lot. We don't have to talk about all of them. I think we should, the, the team at the bottom of that list, we should leave out because they're, well. No, that team I want to leave in. No, that no. Involve, no, no, because that involves your favorite team as well. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Kate, you're right. Yes, it does. You're right. We're going to talk about that. This is this is why I'm the host. Um, so I have teams that we don't talk about who I think we should talk about include Calgary, Pittsburgh, Boston, Winnipeg, the Islanders, Seattle, Arizona. I like it. All right, we'll we'll do we'll do a we'll do like quick deep. We'll do shallow dives, shallow dives into yeah. each yeah. of these teams. Kitty, kitty pool dives, no deep end for us. Yeah, kitty pool. We're, we're going to the, uh, we're just going to the hot tub. Like we're just getting into the hot <laughs> tub and sitting down and, you know, sitting next, next to the Jets. Um, sure. Let's start with the flank. Speaking of hot. Yeah, speaking of hot. Yeah. Good one. Get it. Yeah. Good nice, one. nice segue. Um, Calgary, uh, as we record this, has 89 points. I think they're playing LA right now as we record on Monday night. 68 yeah. games played. Uh, they have the second best goals against per game in the NHL at two and a half. Um, top 10 power play, top 10 penalty kill. The Flames have, we talked about it, the best, if not one of the best top lines in the NHL. Yep. A top 10 goalie. Yep. I did. De- I think I think a great, not a great, but one of the best top nines in all of the NHL. Yeah, I also agree with that. And a really solid decor. I think all of these things with Calgary is lining them up for a long playoff. I agree, and again, their their first round matchup isn't going to be some. It's not, they're not going to get Colorado. They won't get St. Louis. They won't get Minnesota in the first round. They won't even get them in the second round. It won't be until the third round that they see one of those three teams. And those are, if I'm Calgary right now, those are the three teams I'm worried about. Um, you're absolutely right. No, Calgary is kind of a wagon. And the, the fact they picked up to Foley and Yaron Croak really, as you mentioned, shores up their top nine. And I like the decor. They don't have anyone that stands out, which you don't really need. Like Chris the Penguins. Can- Chris Tanev's their best D-man? I, oh, I don't know if I'd even say that. Like, it just it depends, it depends what you're looking for. Like, if you're talking about, like, pure defensive skill, yeah, Chris Tanev's probably their best defenseman. But in terms of offensive output, again, you could say Hannafin, you could say Rasmus Anderson, you could even say Shillington on the back end. It just, again, to your point, they're so well balanced, but they don't, no one stands out. And that's the part about the Flames that's kind of scary. Like, I would be... Like in, in a matchup situation, I would be maybe not hesitant, but I would not like playing a, if playing my top guys against their third pair, who is Erica Branson and Nikita Zadorov, who are both heavy physical defensemen that don't give you much space on the ice. And that's really, yeah, it makes the Flames really scary that way. There are a bunch of thick boys, you could say, about the Branson and Zadorov. Yeah, I think good Branson's six three two ten plus, and Zadorov's probably six four, four. five six, six four two twenty five, maybe even more. But yeah, they're both bricks. You don't they can't they they'll shove you out of the way out of the net. So what what I think the biggest concern, um, I think for myself with the Flames has to be if they go up like the hot goalie, but like if they have to go up against Nashville, let's say. Sure. And they're playing like Soros and Yossi. Right. I don't know. Like that's a matchup I'd be concerned about because of how good goaltending, like how good Soros can be, how good Yossi is, at home as well. Yeah. Like that deep that defense for Nashville is really solid. Oh, they're very solid too. Don't yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. But again, in a seven game playoff series, I don't think the Predators are as physical as the Flames, and the Flames will wear the crap out of you. Yeah. And- that's that's why, and that's another thing about how Daryl Sutter coaches his teams and how they play, is that the Kings weren't all that quick of a team. They were very physical and they ran you basically like 
drove you into the ice like grant like you know they bodied you they bodied you up they outplayed you physically yeah and i think the flames the difference with the flames now compared to those la teams is that these flames play a faster game and they're still mm-hmm. physical and that's the part that's very exciting as a, if i'm a flame i'm not a flames fan but if i was a flames fan i'd be very excited about I kind of have to root for the Flames. I have like a Chuck Blasty jersey. I kind of, I kind of feel obligated to root for them. Yeah, I think you should. I mean, we did put your, we got your name and number put on that for you. So yeah, so I, I, I kind of have to. I think you have to. I think that might be your bandwagon team for the playoffs this year once the Wings and Kraken are eliminated officially. It might, it might even be Toronto. I think. I know. Anyways, so that's our. Uh, hot tub what do we call it like hot tub chat like you know not a shallow dive but like a kitty 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 pool jump i don't know or splash or how about our splash into the calgary flames splash okay well you know we're workshopping this we're, we're going on we're going on a break here in a little bit so we'll we'll get we'll have some time to work on it um the pittsburgh penguins yes the fuck with this team holy shit Third in a Metro, but they still have 92 points. They have three points more than Calgary in two more games. Yep. Um, tied for third in the league in goals against at 2.6. Um, they, have, they have the second best penalty kill in the NHL at 85 and a half. What the yeah. fuck, like, what, 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 what what, the fuck what? happened? Yeah, I'm, I have the same thought. And again, They've very, I mean, to be fair, they do this every year, but they've gone under the radar for a long time. And I think, well, this year, especially Tristan Jari has been a huge part of that. I think he's mm. definitely, I don't think he'll win the Vesna, but he's definitely in the conversation or he has to be at least. He's definitely, he's definitely played his way into the conversation. Agreed. Yeah, definitely agreed. Um, the Penguins have the second tied for second best road record in the Eastern conference as of uh, standings today, which is, pr- which goes to show you how effective they are, you know, obviously, obviously at home, but also on the road and how they're able to kind of adapt and fight through games that aren't necessarily favorable. And that's, you know, again, when you have two leaders like Crosby and Malkin, yes, Malkin hasn't played all year, but he's been back for a bit and Crosby's just been doing Crosby things. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to bet against a team that's got Crosby, Malkin, and Latang like they do. I like that. Well, I like how you mentioned the road record because that's a transferable skill. I feel like, especially in the playoffs, definitely. Like if you can take that on, if you can take what you're doing and take it on the road with you, especially, you know, they're third in a metro. I think they're tied with the Rangers in the standings, but or there may be a point back. Like point, you're, points back. you're probably not going to get a. Home, you're probably not going to get home ice advantage throughout the playoffs. So if you can play well on the road, I think you could transfer that and use that throughout the rest of the postseason. Yep. Um, the other thing I want to discuss with Pittsburgh, they have some significant free agents coming up. Evgeny Malkin is a free agent after this year. Brian Rust, do you know, without looking it up, do you know how old Brian Rust is? I think Brian Rust is either 31 or 32. Okay, he's 29. But Brian Rust is definitely one of those guys who, like, you have no idea how old he is. You just know that he's been a contributing member of the Penguins for a while. And he's one of those fly under the radar type guys. Kind of like Colton Sissons with Nashville. Kind of that same same type of like been in the league for forever, but you don't, know, don't actually know how old they are. No idea. Um, Brian Rush, 29 years old. Uh, Kasperi Kapanen is an RFA after this season. Uh, your boy, Ricard Raquel, who I didn't realize was 28 years old. I didn't realize he was that young. I thought he was older. Um, he, he's a free agent after the year. Um, Evan Rodriguez, uh, not, you know, not related, not to be related, not related to Olivia Rodrigo, three-time Grammy winner. Um, got to throw the pop culture reference in there. Uh, Brian Boyle and Chris Latang are also free agents after this year. That's that's a big, I mean, to be fair, that's a big amount of cap space coming off the Penguins, uh, books, but. I think of those names, I think you absolutely have to re-sign Rodriguez. Okay. Because he's been a stud this year. Um, I think Malkin, because Malkin's, what now, 35, 36? He's getting older. 35. 35. So, again, I think he goes for one of those type of, like, Joe Pavelski and Dallas deals, Ooh. whether it's in Pittsburgh or not. 
yet to be seen, but I feel like he's going to still make a decent amount of money, but it won't be what he was making before. It won't be north of $7 million. Because he's just not that effective anymore. He's still a good player, don't get me wrong. But he's not He's not that play-driving. He's, 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 he's not that Malkin that we think of when we think of him. No, game. well, Mal- Malkin's an absolute beast. But again, he's just not mid-2012's undressing Gabriel Landeskog off the – Ooh. Off the low, you remember that play? Yeah, that was. Ooh, that's a good. That's a good reference. Yeah, that was. A, I remember that stays in my mind. I remember those. Uh, quick little side story. You know those GoPro uh, like after hours clips with Malkin. Oh, vaguely, yeah, no, that's like, vaguely. So his clip was my favorite because, like, he would like some of the shit he did like was before like it it became popular. Like some of the stuff he did, the puck tricks and. Like to flip it over the net and bat it on the other side. Like that was, I kind of learned that from him. So I, you know, went out and tried that myself. But um, yeah, Malkin's a gem. I, th- I hope Pittsburgh re signs him. Because it's, it's part of my thing with Pittsburgh. It's like you're kind of looking in the short term of like right now, yep. if you want to go win a cup. Right. In the, like the medium to long term, you're, you got to find time to re sign Malkin. Kapanen's an RFA, so there's not as much of a rush. Probably Rodriguez. Chris Letang's a weird guy, too, because Chris Letang's 34 with an injury history who's making $7.2 million this year. Again, it says the same thing with him. I don't think he's going to make that much money in his next contract, but I still think he's going to re-sign at Pittsburgh. There's a – yeah. It's, again, it's, it's now it's, we're getting to the point in some of these guys' careers that we're, like, so familiar with being with their teams. Like, I mean – I'll just talk, mention Chicago briefly. Like, there's been talk about Taves being moved to a different team. There's talk about Kane being moved to the deadline, and now it's the same thing in Pittsburgh. Like these, you know, what we think cornerstone guys that might get moved because of their situations and cap space issues. Not that the Penguins have cap space issues, but um, being able to try resign all these guys is going to be a challenge for Pittsburgh, no doubt. So, I don't want to say that. Pittsburgh is like, you know, with Crosby, Malkin, Latang, you don't want to bet against them. But it, I'm still tempted, I'm hesitant to say that they'll go on a run. Oh, I definitely agree with you. I think Carolina, New York, Florida, Tampa, and Toronto are better than them mm-hmm. as of right now in the Eastern Conference. And again, the Penguins are probably at this, at this point, probably going to get New York in the first round. And I don't see, again, we talk about the goalie thing. If Jari stands on his head, that's a different story. But the other guy in, in net is Shesterkin. So who really, like, how do you, how do you beat a Rangers you, team like that? You don't really. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. You, you, you think you're going to goalie the opponent? Just wait till you meet their goalie. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about another team in the East then. Sure. Uh, the Boston Bruins. We don't talk about them much because we don't like them very much as a team. Do we not? I don't, I'm kind of indifferent about the Bruins. I don't really. I think you have more of a like animosity towards them than I do. I don't. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um. Don't get me wrong. I love some of the Bruins players. I think Pasternak's uh, Pasternak's so sick. Same with Bergeron. And I like Marshawn. He's growing on me now a little bit. He started to chill out with his dumb shit and he started to actually play hockey and he's actually a very good player um that's speaking of top first lines in hockey not they're not all the three of them aren't together now the production yeah thing anymore but um as a trio they were probably the most effective line of hockey for a long time um, I, mean, I think whenever we talked about the bruins it was like oh you know you want to get a second line center you know yeah they'll be good and yeah. it's like they didn't they have Eric Halla or whatever playing second line, and, yeah. or or Charlie well, Coyle. They're in between Taylor Hall and David Pasternak, but yeah. So it's like, okay, it's, sure. It's one of those, like Chandler Stevenson things in Vegas, like you know he's like you know probably a third. Hall is probably a third line center on most teams, but because he plays well with these two, I don't want to call Taylor Hall a superstar, but these two star wingers, two it, two two X factor NHL players. How about that? Not for sure. Yeah, well, that, that's a good way to word it. Um, it's not yeah. a gold star for Taylor Hall. It's Taylor Hall. It's more like a silver, I think. It's, it's a point. silver. Yeah, yeah. No X factor ability for that guy. But um, no, anyway, I I like the Bruins are a solid team. Um, I don't. I mean, 
there's teams I hate more like Los Angeles and San Jose, but um, the Bruins have, I've no, never loved the Bruins, but I do respect them and what they do. And they've, they did pick up a former duck in at the trade deadline as well, which was a very good move on their part. I believe. I like the trade. I'm not sure about the extension, but we talked, I think we talked about that too, where it's like, yeah. you're, you, you kind of have to, when you make that deal, you kind of have to give the extension. Like it's because it looks like a dumb move. If you don't give the extension, I agree. And I think Lindholm's too valuable of a defenseman to not, if for the Bruins, okay, the Bruins gave up a lot, to be fair, to get him. They gave up a lot. But sure. I, it's I was hard gonna... to find a left shot shut down defenseman like Lindholm. Well, and like, it's an eight year deal, but the dude is still probably going to be effective for like the next four or five. Exactly. That's well. Like, 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 like you're, like you're, you're, yeah, okay. You're right. It, well, it's like it's kind of like those baseball contracts, right? Like when you sign like Bryce Harper or like Manny Machado to like a 13 year deal, it's like, yeah, this guy's probably going to be effective like up until like year seven or eight. Yeah. And then the final five are just write off years because you were hoping that you could win a World Series in those seven or eight years. It's the same thing with the Bruins. It's like, yeah, yeah. this dude's probably going to be a write off after the fifth year, but we hope we can win a you know a Stanley Cup in those five years. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's going to, we'll have to see what happens, but I do like, I don't mind the Lindholm signing and I think he will be an important part of that Bruins decor for a while. And again, McAvoy is still youngish. Um, they got Brandon Carlo there who's still a solid guy. Uh, Grizzly, I believe is still there. So that, that, that top four right there is really good. That's a, that's a mean top four. It's a mean top four. And McAvoy is such a leader on that back end that he's going to, he's going to have to munch a lot of minutes if they want to, get by we're gonna call it toronto right now because that's how the standing sits but so, so that so that brings up i want to say away to this because i think this is a really good point we haven't had or i don't feel like we've we maybe talked about this enough there are teams who are different regular se- like different teams in the playoffs in the regular season oh like, sure. the, L- like the like the like the la kings teams that you were talking about under Sutter for many years yep. they just got through the regular season yeah. to get to the playoffs. And then they were a mean bunch when they got to the playoffs. And that's who, that's who the Bruins are. That's what the Bruins have always been. Is that mean oh, yeah. group, that mean group when you get to the playoffs after, I'm not saying they've been coasting this regular season. Cause like they've won eight of the last 10, like they're still really good. Yeah. But like, that's a team who like, if you get the Bruins in the playoffs, good luck. Good luck. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's hard to go into TD Garden and win at least a game. It's oh yeah, it's hard. Even if you have home ice advantage, you gotta go in there and win a game. It's it's not easy to. It's a no. tough tough barn to play in for anybody. It's a tough barn. It's a tough team. It's just like tough style of play. Like the oh, Bruin, like we talk, like I talk about like teams that just don't give a shit about you. The Boston Bruins are the pinnacle of the we do not give a shit about you, especially when you come to our building. We are going to beat the crap out of you, and you will not like it. Yep. No, I could, couldn't agree more. That's Yeah, you nailed it. Um, so look out for Boston. I like Boston more than I like Pittsburgh. If I had to bet on a team to like win the cup, I would bet on Boston more than I would bet on Pittsburgh. The goaltending situation bugs me in Boston, but – Jerry Swayman, that dude is in yeah, way but, right now. But is he better than Tristan Jari? I don't think he is. I'd, I'd, I'd make that bet. I'd be willing to make that bet this year wow. for this postseason. Hot take. Um, yeah. Speaking of teams with team with good goaltending, Winnipeg, the Jets? Well, we thought so. Connor Hellebuck was, you know, it well is still an all-world goalie, but – Based on yeah, where, but yeah. but like but but now like his save percentage like instead of being like nine thirty for like most years it's like between like nine five and nine ten isn't it? But again, every every goalie's numbers have like gone goals get that gone fluctuate. up save percentage has gone down. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, that's 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 true. So Winnipeg, the here's a, the Jets are an interesting team because. I think things have run its course. We've talked about them a little bit, but we don't talk about them a whole lot. Yeah. I think things have run its course in Winnipeg. Under this group of players, um, we saw... Uh, like the original core, almost. 
like yeah. the original friend like okay not friends like you know it's the thrasher hill franchise but the original core is kind of like it's gone like 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 we know like like andrew ladd's been gone for a while um blake wheeler i think should be gone in the off season i think they're probably moving mark, mark shifley i think you can get quite a really? bit from mark Sh- i think you can get quite a bit for shifley oh i definitely you- shifley is a is an elite elite 2c on a lot of teams and if you know for example, a team like boston might really benefit from having a guy like shifley in their team and i mean like you know yes he doesn't back check unless it's to hit a defenseless player scoring on an empty net in a playoff game um oh he's a highly I, effective player though highly effective highly effective player i think with this jets core though i think things that's you know things have just run its course like it it, it is what it is yep. um i think they're moving on from people in the off season um i don't know how far it's gonna go like i think really shifley might go because shifley's been one of those core guys for a while but like if they're moving on, like depending on how far they want to go, they might move maybe Connor Halibut too. Like I don't think they would, but it just depends on how far you want to tear it down, right? It's kind of like the John Gibson thing. Like Halibut, you know, again, do you move again? You could argue this for Gibson. You could argue for, like, do you move Halibut? Like he's again an all-world goalie, maybe having a bit of an off year this year, but generally speaking, he's one of the best goalies in the league. And it's hard to move a goalie like okay it's like you could get a lot of assets for that goalie but it's hard to as a because you want to have some stability and you know ensure that you've got a competitive team and having a good goalie is a foundation of that right and um i do agree with you on the shifley point i think they need to change a culture and i think he bears a lot of that because he was the first draft pick of the team i think he's got to go and they've got to change things up somehow some way um whether it's retool or who knows what it looks like but um yeah like depend like depending on how it goes i think shifley could be available yep blake wheeler nikola ehlers nikolai ehlers i dubois. love ehlers. yeah i think dubois stays i think at this point dubois is gonna stay um i would be i would almost wonder if josh morrissey is gonna be on the move out more um, Morrissey and Pionk were like two guys I was thinking might yeah, also get. I think one of them goes. I th- I think it's more likely Pionk than Morrissey, but I just I think, think it's I think it's Morrissey than Pionk because of the fact that you know, and I know like they they got Pionk from the Tru- Truba trade, right? Yeah, and you know with GM egos, it's like oh we got this really good player in exchange for Truba, we can't let him go because we got this good guy, but we can let Morrissey go for different assets, like if that makes sense. Um, I mean, I don't know. I I really like Morrissey's game. I think it's a mistake for the Jets to move him personally. Um, I do see that happening though, because again, Billy Heinel is coming up through the system, and will hopefully be playing more. Because again, he's a you know solid up and coming defenseman. So, I think more, but Morrissey and Hellebuck are more at like the like on the end of like unlikely to be moved. Like I don't think Winnipeg's moving those guys. It just depends. It just depends on how deep they want to go. I think they move a forward for it. I think they move yeah. either Shifley or Wheeler or even Ehlers for that matter um, before they move anyone else. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. There. So Winnipeg, um, they're kind of in the run for the playoff. They're not really in this playoff race. No, yeah, we, we 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 have to we have to admit that they are, but they aren't. They basically um, have to go eleven and one to have even a shot. Yeah, and I just don't think that's going to happen. No, math, math isn't in their favor. No. Um, speaking of math not being in their favor, the New York Islanders, um, who, have, who have been playing better as of late. I'll give them credit. Yeah. I was watching them play the Devils on Sunday. And, you know, playing better. Not great, but better. Um, I think that's a team you could also admit should be doing some sort of rebuild or roster tear down like making some changes within the organization roster roster wise but i think because of who lou and barry trotz are yeah and i think you could also make the argument it's a one-year blip and all this like their season was weird to start because of the new arena and they were on the road and all this sort of stuff yeah and they also got hit by covid pretty hard early in the year yeah again with the new arena situation played a huge role 
I almost think um, the like with the it's weird because like some of their top guys are still pretty young. Barzal is only twenty five. Dobson's twenty two or twenty three. Um, Pajot. No, Do- Dobson's younger than me. He's like twenty one. Oh, he's twenty one. Okay, there you go. Yeah, he's a two thousand. He's a two thousand guy. Um, I just yeah these those two guys and like they have a solid Varlamov's a solid goalie. They have a solid team. Sorokin. Yeah, so sorry, Sorokin now. Yeah, they're kind of one A one B at this point. But um yeah, they're I don't know. The it's weird. I think you're right. I think it's more of a one year blip for these guys versus uh let's let's rip it apart. Let's trade Barzell, let's move Andrews Lee. I don't think that's the move. I don't think it I is. don't think I don't think that's the move either. I like like I like Barzell. I like Anders Lee. It's and I like Dobson. Like Dobson, I think it's really like it was kind of it's kind of a savvy move of Lou to bring in Zidane Chara, who like Dobson's been playing with for most of this year. Like yeah. getting to learn with Chara. Chara obviously is not the same guy um, that no, I, you know that he's been in years past. Like this is the one year where he's really like had a decline in play. But nevertheless, like Dobson's got to learn with him and be around him pretty much every day. Um, it's more like the you know. The guys like the Cal Clutterbucks and the Matt Martins yeah. and the, the Paris. It, yeah. The, the, the replacement level guys yeah. getting these extensions. And I get that, you know, the Islanders have a culture and they have all this sort of stuff, but I don't, I don't know. No, um, I, are you getting distracted by the basketball game now here too? Yeah, we, we have. So uh, viewers, if Ian mentioned this before, but the NCAA, uh, men's basketball national championship is currently on right now with 3.2 seconds left in the second half and Kansas is up by three and I'm pretty sure North Carolina has the ball uh th- did you see that thing over the weekend about how um like the view because so the final four is taking place in the I guess it's now the call the Caesars uh Superdome in New Orleans where the where the Saints play yeah. and did you see some of the views like from the nosebleeds um Oh, at the stadium. Horrible. Like you can't see a thing. So, so my question for you, sure, and maybe you wouldn't because you're maybe not the biggest basketball guy, but right. like I think some of those seats were going for like nine hundred, like a thousand dollars. What would you pay to go watch the fun, like a a national championship or like a, the the final four game? I don't know if I pay nine hundred bucks for those kind of seats. for for that view. That's what I was no. for that view. No, no, I don't think it's worth it. No, I'd probably. Well, yeah, it's it's hard because, well, a my team like if it was like Villanova, not the would have been possible enough in the national championship, but if it was like Villanova, Michigan, or like Villanova, Oregon in in the national championship, I would have been like, okay, I'll I'll you know I can spend the money on this, but I just it's hard to spend that much money with sh- seats that are that shitty, in my opinion. But I think part of it, part of it, making is like the the experience of being there and like ha- li- like li- like having the thousands of fans there i think that's part of it i mean i don't really have much of a stake in the unc kansas game i don't really care who wins actually i'm kind of rooting for unc to be a TB- tbh um because... well, we'll be fun if they win it all to be honest well i think it's more like they have you know they beat duke they beat coach k in his final games so like to be validated for that they need to win this national championship um so we'll get a live reaction i guess to this game and uh i guess we'll any final thoughts on the islanders like i just feel like the it's a flawed roster in some parts but they have the talent there it might just be a one year blip. yeah one year blip just retool a bit shift things up a little bit and we'll see what happens oh hit this so let's see here north carolina with the inbound that's it. Oh, that's a ba- that's a bad spot. Oh, he's got to put that up. No, that's it. that's it. Kansas wins. Congrats to the Jayhawks. Um, I don't remember. I don't. I think I had Kansas losing in like a Sweet Sixteen. Um, Kansas, I've never. I don't like. I think they were like their Kansas has been like a blue blood. But I don't – I think trying to think, like, the last time they were in the finals, I think, was, like, with Derrick Rowe or, like, that, in 2008. Oh the last time I remember them being good was when Wiggins and Embiid were on the team. 
Yeah, but they didn't make the Final Four, I don't think. True, but they were good that year. They should have made the Final Four that year. Was Embiid a former Jayhawk? Yeah, he was. Him and Wiggins played together, I'm pretty sure. Uh, they made the Final Four in 2018, allegedly. Hmm. Losing to... Uh, they lose to in 2018. 2018. Oh my gosh. Would that have been Villanova? No. Uh, that was the year Villanova won, and they, they, won lo- they lost to Villanova. There you go. Um, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, what is, what's the saying with the uh, is a rock chalk Jayhawk or something? Uh, I've got to find the I got to find the actual I, proper uh chant that they do. I wouldn't know. Uh, you know. ro- the rock, rock chalk, rock chalk chant is what it is. That's what it is. There you go. I learned something new today. Um, congratulations to the Kansas. Um, what are I, I, I gotta say? I haven't talked about uh, the March Madness tournament with you on this show, but what a tournament! Holy, March Madness is back, baby. March um, Madness is yeah, is it ever? Um. I don't think I knew a single college basketball player this year. And I was still engaged with it. I was, um, people tell me that apparently this Chet Holmgren kid from Gonzaga is good. Is that um, Paul Holmgren's like son or like cousin? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not. No, it's not. I don't think. I mean, really funny if it was, though. That that is a great reference. I'm I'm gonna see if this kid is uh uh related to anybody. Um yeah, I don't know anybody, any kid in college this year. I kind of want to get into college bat. I want to be co- I think I want to cover that a little bit more. Like some Have you of the not been into college basketball before. I have been, but like I kind of want to get more like more in depth, more hardcore with like covering college sports or at least ncaa sports it's just our audience uh wouldn't be that interested in like you know umass lowell versus hartford on a tuesday i guess so that's yeah that's fair but um you know it's um it's you know it's a tough it's tough trying to promote the america east conference on the west coast right it's it's a pretty hard job (laughs) Yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, it's hard to cater to that market. I mean, the March Madness is a lot of fun, and I know a lot of people like to bet on it, but it's more about the teams versus the individual players, I think. The actual schools that participate, so. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, everybody, well, the best thing, that's what's so great about um, American college sports is that almost everybody has a school. Everybody has a rooting interest somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you don't have – if your team isn't in the tournament, then you can just hate watch uh, your rivals. <laughs> there you go. Where, where it's just like, you know, I hate you, Arizona State. <laughs> like, Screw you, UNLV. <laughs> All my homies hate Wake Forest. Um Hey, don't be distra- disrespecting Wake Forest. Come on. The football program is decent, right? Uh, it's allegedly a top 25 program. Um, yes. Speaking of allegedly being a top 25 team, uh, the Seattle Kraken. Um, do you want to talk about the Kraken? <laughs> no. yeah. Allegedly, they were like, what, 29th or 30th in the league? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the expansion draft was uh, bad. We can uh, fully admit that now. I think. I, I think. Well, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't jump to that conclusion right away. I think we can. I think we can. Like we can stamp that and say it was. But it like, was, like bad in what way? That's what I'm. Uh, uh, poor draft picks. Uh, okay. I think poor, poor players who they select. We've got um, to do a uh, Seattle Kraken redraft. <laughs> Seattle, we're going to do that. That's going to be some great summer content. Is that is re- content. redrafting the 2021 expansion draft. 
I like that. I, it was it wasn't good. Um, I think this team thought they were going to be competitive. I thought they were going to be competitive, and um, they they they've stunk. Um, I think part of it is uh, no, but I don't think anybody thought the goaltending was going to be this bad this year. That's very true. I think Grubauer is severely underperformed of what he could and should do. Hit him and and Drieger hasn't been, I think, healthy for one hundred. He hasn't been healthy all year. Um, so that team is underperformed. Uh, in net, they don't have any scoring. Um, they need to go out and get a goal scorer. It's kind of surprising in a way that they trade Yarn. Kru- I mean, you're not going to say no to what, like a second and a third for him. Uh, for an older guy, yeah, and a rent like a rental ish guy, like yeah, I think the Kraken definitely won that trade. And I think the goal. I mean, Ron Francis has made that very clear. Like they're building a team for the future. They're not just building a team to win now, which the Golden Knights kind of did in a way. They did but, both. Like they like they and I both. and I yeah. and I guess the argument too is that GMs are smarter now than they were the first time with Vegas. Yeah. T- Vegas severely abused teams by taking several players and manipulating um certain draft picks to be able to get other players like i mean the the knights stole marshall so and smith from the panthers and there was no way any gym was letting that happen again but at the same time like do you know where gavin bayruther is playing right now probably i don't know like no i don't know either that's the thing I don't know where Gavin Bay Ruther's playing, and he was a pick in the expansion draft. Who was the who was the guy that they took from Philadelphia? Who was the guy? Oh my god! Was it the Ron- fact that you the fact that you have to think about it now is like yeah, but I mean the Flyers are a highly irrelevant team at this point. But oh oh, you're taking <laughs> shots at the Flyers now. Oh come on, yeah, they're, come on, they're in the basement of. They're, in a, they're allegedly a top 25 team as well in the NHL this year. Well, I mean, right now they're mathematically eliminated from the playoff race. So you tell me who's top 25, but. Um, listen, <laughs> Seattle had a, a terrible expansion draft. I, I'm, I'm stamping my whatever. I'm, I'm putting my stamp on that. And um, not all hope is lost because they do have Matty Beniers. They're yep. probably going to have a top five pick this year. That's going to be really good. I think they take a defenseman. I think this is a defense heavy draft. I would, I wouldn't mind them take seeing them take like year check. Or do you think okay. they take like a guy like Slavkovsky? I think they take the best player available. Fair enough. Yeah. I think that I, I, I listen, it's the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Take the best player available. Don't overthink it. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't try and get fancy with it. Just what take the best player available. What if it's another Matty Beniers type? What if they great? Uh, just take another like Beniers and right back to back. Great, do it. Really? Yes. Why wouldn't you? Why, you'd be stupid not to? I guess so. Yeah, that's fair. Listen, take take the best player available. Perception wise, you can still trade that guy later on because <laughs> people will still think that he's a good player. Because NHL GMs are stupid, like. There's enough stupid. There's enough stupid GMs out there who, you know, here, here. Okay, I want to bring this up because this was a funny conversation I was having with somebody the other day. We were talking about the Canucks, and I know you. Do, we were trying to avoid doing all this, but here, I just like hear me out on this about sure, yeah, sure. GMs being dumb. So I said with the Canucks, you just like, and I made this argument before. You just need to get rid of like the OELs and like you know, buy them out and use that cap space to get some better defense. Like there's enough dumb GMs who will, you know, be all over the, some of those guys, right? But you're gonna give up o- OEL a good defenseman to He's get. He's fine. There. He's but you need you need that cap space from you know the round out your defense is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. The Tucker Pool, like trade Tucker Pullman. Okay, and I agree. This, that. Yeah. And this dude's like, well, who's gonna take on Tucker Pullman? It's like there's enough dumb GMs who will be out there to take, you know, bad contracts like that. And I shit you not, when the trade deadline happened a few days later, Travis Hammond got traded to Ottawa for a third round pick. That's a steal from the Canucks. Are you kidding? Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's like there's enough, like there's Peter oh, Dorian. They're right. Hey, um, the Canucks did a good job with swapping out Hamannick for Dermott. I think that was. Yes. 
I think that was a great move. I think that yes. was a good move by Canucks GM. What's his name now? Patrick Alvin. That's the one, Patrick Alvin. But, but my, po- my point is, even if you think this guy can't be dumb enough to do this move, he is. There's a good chance that that guy is dumb enough to do that move. True. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's funny, actually. Um, no, that is very funny. You, you don't think anybody's trading for Duncan Keith? Well, let me introduce you to Ken Hall and in Edmonton, who is willing to take on all of his contracts and give up assets to do so. <laughs> You're telling me this guy is, wouldn't be dumb enough to do that? He is. Well, to be fair, the Oilers are in a playoff spot, so it's, I guess, worse. Okay, but they've gotten worse from last year. Like, this is my argument for McDavid for the heart is because Ken Holland actively made his team worse and McDavid <laughs> is still putting, like, still leads the league in scoring. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Oh, boy. Um, I got to say, that's going to be one hell of a second-round matchup between the Oilers and Flames if it gets to that. The, well, I hope the Oilers don't make the playoffs. I think that'd be hilarious. I love chaos. <laughs> I think Ken Holland deserves to not make the playoffs for what he did this offseason. I think Ian had some pent up anger and he just released it right there. <laughs> I love how we're supposed to be talking about the crack and here we're going to talk about the Oilers. <laughs> My point is, is that there's enough dumb GMs who will make these moves. Um, Fair enough. and I'm not saying that Ron Francis is a dumb GM. I think he's actually like, I think he's smart, but like that was a bad expansion draft and he's kind of making up for it with collecting some draft picks back on those players. He's got to sign a, go- a score in the off season, probably get a top four defenseman now that geo has gone and maybe coast your way to like 85 points next year. If things go better. Um, Yeah, I like it. That's, that's a good summary. And now, we, and now they started playing Cole Lynn. Oh, I know. Like, Finally, right? They took him long enough. Like, he was an expansion draft pick. It's like, well, fuck, we're already out. Might as well give him a chance. Like, why did you give him a chance in the first place? Anyway. I feel like they also should have started Matt Veneers in the NHL and see what he could have done and then send him back to Michigan. But no, because, no, because Ron Francis has a bunch of time because he's like, this is the, re- you know, we're building a new team. He doesn't have any pressure. There's no pressure on Ron Francis. Why Why rush Matty Veneers? There's no pressure. You got to wait. Not until, yeah, not until year three, I guess. That's a good point. Yeah, until, like, the team, like, sucks ass for, like, another two or three years, and then they have another lottery pick, and then it's just like, well, hey, you know, it's – okay, <laughs> can I also make this argument, too? I'm really just going off the rails here. Yeah. But I was, <laughs> I, I was listening to 32 Thoughts, the podcast with Elliot Friedman, Jeff Merrick, either today or yesterday. I can't remember which episode it was. Sure. Friedman was talking about how hard it is to make the playoffs in the NHL when talking about the Canucks. Okay. And, you know, he said, like, oh, it's really hard to make the playoffs in the NHL. Bullshit! It's not hard! It's not hard! You have a 50% chance of making the playoffs. That's all things considered. It's better than baseball. It's better than baseball! It's better than football! Like, and if you, you know, if you don't make dumb decisions like taking on Duncan Keith's full contract, you can probably use that cap space to help improve your chances of making the playoffs. Like, it's not hard. It's not hard. I'm not saying I could be a GM tomorrow, but I'm saying I could tell you, like, what decisions are smarter and what, you know, like, If anybody tells you it's hard to make the playoffs in the NHL, just Will Smith, your friend. Just Will Smith, that person. Like, <laughs> like it's not hard. It's not hard. I'm not saying we also condone violence. I'm just saying, like, it's not hard. It's really not that hard, all things considered. In today's world, in today's NHL, not hard. It's hard to win in the playoffs, but to, to get there, it's not. Sure. And like you can make the argument that playoffs is just about as much as luck as it is skill in, in today's NHL. It's just about like how luck. 
Yeah. Who's healthy? Who's got the hot goalie? And who puts the puck in the net? Yeah. More than the other team. Yeah. Yeah. It's not hard. It's not hard, guys. Um, I know. We, I know. I said I wanted to talk about the Coyotes. Um, no. Do you, do, you, do you? No. Okay. Um, you don't need to talk about the Coyotes. Jay Beagle. Oh yeah, we can mention him briefly. Um, that was. I want to hear your thoughts on it. I have my opinion, um, but I do want to hear your thoughts on it. So when I initially, like my, the first time I saw that video, I didn't like, cause the camera angle was weird too. Like I didn't get the impression that Troy Terry was like done, done. Like, if that makes sense, like he was, yeah. I just saw them engaged in a fight and I just thought they were fighting. Yeah. I didn't re- I didn't realize until I watched it again where like Troy Terry was like really just out of it. Like by the time he got onto the, yeah, he was getting pummeled by that. Yeah. I, here's the thing. I think, I think the coyote, Jay Beagle and the coyotes in general are trying to um, establish a new culture and establish a, we don't take shit from anybody type of mentality. Sure. <clears throat> Which I think is fine. Cause you know, a lot of turnover, a lot of change in the organization. I get you're, you're trying to establish a culture, especially with the new coach, Andre Turnier, who all things considered, I think you could make an, you know, there's a, there's a, I won't, I don't agree, but I think you can make a, a, an argument that he should get like some Jack Adams votes for what Andre Turnier has done with the Coyotes this season and making that team competitive. Um, make, like getting them to what, 20 wins this year? They have 20. Yeah, I guess that the fact that they have 20 wins is impressive. I guess that's a good point. Yeah. So I guess my point is with Beagle, he's trying to set a tone. He's trying to set a culture. Yeah. And he went too far. Yeah. Not that I, 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 he went too far. I get why Zegris was doing what he, like, I don't think this is about the Michigan. <laughs> No, no, it's not at all. No, it's not I don't think I don't think that's what this is about. I think this is about um, Zegers poking for the puck in the final five minutes, up five nothing. Yeah, which it's playing to the whistle and probably what I would have done. Yeah, absolutely. The puck, the uh, allegedly, I didn't see the act, like an actual good camera angle, but allegedly the puck was still loose. Allegedly, sure. And sure. you know the 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 argument is that well, you shouldn't be digging for the puck up five nothing with like five to go. And it's like, okay, I guess, whatever. Like, even in, like, Trevor, like, I think you know if you're going to the paint, if you're going to the crease at any point, you're probably going to get cross-checked in, in how we play and in, in how the NHL is today. Yeah. Like, you're, you're probably going to get hit. Every level of hockey. It doesn't matter where you are. Even in Adam, you're, you're going to get run into. Yeah. You're going to get run into. You're going to get run into whenever you're in front of the net. The problem is, the problem, there's two issues. I think it's Jay Beagle cross checking Zeger from behind. And I don't, did he get a call for that? Nope. You got to call that because that's a dirty cross check. You know, you're going past the stop sign, you're ignoring the stop sign. Yeah. You, and the, the NHL has talked about protecting and promoting its star players. And, Cracking down on cross checks. On cross checks, yeah. And again, you know, there's debate about you know Zegris as the new face of the NHL. Is he a star player? Well, not quite, but he's damn close to being a star player in this league. So, and I and I think again, you have to you know you have to look out, you have to look out for your player safety. And you yeah. can make the argument too about Zegris poking at, you know, sure. Melka's groin or whatever. Like, fine, okay. Oh, in the puck but sure okay like you can make there, there's an argument i guess to be made there about how you're poking as like whatever cross check dirty you can't have that you yeah. like you can have i get trying cross check to the back cross checking from behind i it's more like you just can't have that that's just unacceptable the other issue is troy terry was doing a good thing his intentions were good trying to stand up for his player. Yeah, but he's the wrong guy to do it. He's the wrong guy to do it. But the other thing is that I don't know who on Anaheim is the guy to go and do it. And this with- is what I was I was waiting for you to say something about this, and I'm going to go off for a bit. Sure, Anaheim- you, you – sure. The Anaheim Ducks fucked up. 
when they traded Nicholas Delorier, that basically gave a green light to any team to light up Zegris, Terry, Drysdale, Fowler, if you will. Some of these guys that are, are skilled, skilled, effective players on the Ducks. And moving Delorier, you know, great. We got a third round pick for essentially a fourth line grinder. That's good job. But there's no, now, right at this point right now, there's no one at Anaheim that is going to protect Zegris. Jones is, Max Jones is still out. He would be one of those guys. Um, Manson's another guy who, he was another there. guy. He's gone. Um, you can even talk about a guy like, you know, Sam Carrick, you know, great, great player, good, gritty forward, not a fighter, not going to protect Zegris. Uh, Derek Grant, gritty guy as well, not a fighter, not going to protect Zegris. So, I, so, and I, and I like, and I like this point because I think we want to be in an NHL. I, I think where this is going eventually is there won't be an NHL where we have these tough guys whose role, like it's going to, I think it's eventually, it's just going to be all pure skill and not, not under this commissioner, but at some point I think it's going to be like, you know, at some point they're going to start calling the penalty. At some point, they're going to start getting some of this rough stuff out of the game, right? That's where I think yeah, this is heading, like, like, like 10 yeah. years down the road. Like, this yeah. isn't happening overnight. Sure. But I but also – sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I think right now, where we have this stuff going on, yeah, you need those tough guys. Definitely, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like, Tam- like Tampa Bay, as much as we, you know, applaud the Lightning for their skilled players – and their talent, especially in their top six. They won cups with Barkley Goodrow, with yeah. Blake Coleman. Like yeah. those guys who they're like are going, you're going to hear from them if you try and do anything to the Braden Points or the Steven Stamkos or the Kucherov. Why do you even throw in like a guy like Pat Maroon or uh, or Pat Maroon's another Roy, guy? Roy, like, Roy Perry now on this team. Um, and you no, you're absolutely right. Um, my kind of counter argument to the whole there's still roughness and fighting, like you know, not made of like fight fighting, but like rough stuff on in hockey. I don't think that's ever going to go away, in my opinion. And I think you still need an L toughness. You need those guys that play with a bit of grit, like a, you know, guys that you know, sure are skilled. But you're right, there is a bit of a shift happening. But the guys that are going to be that like tough guy are going to be some guys that have some skill. Look at like Mason McTavish is an easy example for Anaheim. Like, sure, he's, you know, he's a highly skilled player. He has an NHL shot in junior, but he's still a greedy guy, knows how to get in the corners and doesn't mind throwing glove, you know, chucking knucks if he needs to. Right. So, um, but I, I think, I, and I think that's the like right now what it takes to win. Like, we've had like, it was the same thing with like, Toronto, for example, yeah, like the Maple Leafs, um, you know, are a team who I think we've always thought of like a really highly skilled team mm-hmm. who just didn't have that or, or haven't really had that physical element with them for a few years. And then they got Wayne Simmons. Yep. And, and you know, they've, a- they've added toughness, not toughness, but like a little bit of grit with Colin Blackwell. Yeah, agreed. Like a little gritty skill guy, for sure. No, for sure. And, and and like maybe Toronto would be a different team if they still had like the Matt Bartons or I don't know Leo Komarov. Yeah. Like, sure. Like maybe maybe we're we're talking about them differently. But you know when you look at like the, at Toronto's like top three or top nine, like their their three lines of like mm. you know. I mean, they added Bunting. Like, Bunting's a great example to this, where Michael Bunting is just, like, the new I think Hyman. He's more so ch- yeah, a cheaper Zach Hyman is basically. A, a cheaper Hyman, and, like, he's more physical. He takes less yeah. shit. Yep. Agreed. Um, and, and he's been a, a welcome addition. He's not a, you know, a call day trophy candidate. But, like, that – and that – so, to bring us all back to Anaheim, Anaheim doesn't have that that guy. I don't know who that guy is on Anaheim. You would know more than I would. I don't know who that guy is on Anaheim. So when it's Troy, when it's Troy Terry, who's going to step in on Jay Beagle, that's a mismatch. Yeah, it's a huge mismatch. And that, and as people have probably seen on social media, Troy Terry's face looks like a balloon. Um, and which, that's, which is that's, which is which is also Beagle, 
like still punching him when he's just out when he's done. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like like Beagle went too far in that regard too. Agreed. But it this this could have been prevented. Yeah. Very easily. Again, I, I'm not you know saying what Zegers did was wrong. It wasn't. He was playing to the whistle, and going after a loose puck. Fair enough. It's Beagle that steps in, and then no one else after him is going to step in and go after Beagle. And you have to let Troy Terry, your leading scorer, do it. That that doesn't sit well with me. So. So I don't, and I don't know. I mean, Nick Glory, I guess, could come back. They might, maybe they resign yeah. him in the off season. In the off season, they might. Yeah, they might get him back. We'll see. But. Like, I don't, I don't know, like, this seems like a temporary problem that you can solve as you're, like, because Anaheim's still building, the, you know, their culture and their organization with this rebuild, new yep. GM and everything. Um, I don't know if Dallas Aikens, Aikens is going to be the, the coach after this year. I don't know how, that, how his contract works and how all that's going to go. It might be a Jeff Blashill thing where they keep him five years after they should. But, um, Yeah. I think Dallas Dickens is a great coach in that team. And again, he's, he was a coach in San Diego for a long time and he got promoted up to Anaheim. And I think that's kind of sitting well with the system and the team because he's again, kind of come up with a lot of these players that have made the roster now, like Isaac Lindstrom, Sam Steele, um, Troy Terry, if you will, even in a guy like Max Jones, who's still injured, Max Comtois as well. You could mention there. Um, all these these guys have grown up with Aikens, if you will, and keeping him as the coach, I don't think is a bad option. I think he's been a good fit in Anaheim. I think he should stay there for the time being, at least. So that's our hockey talk, talking about teams we don't talk about. Yeah. Um, that segment should be sponsored by like Chatter Mobile or something like that. Some like some talking sponsored by the Talking Heads band. Like, um, like we should get text plus to sponsor us right there's still a thing that's uh what was in a rel oh i made some sort of oh, that's a good reference i made some sort of a re- irrelevant reference to my with my brother today and i wish i could remember what it was anyways not the point um do you want to do a little bit of baseball do you want to, opening day is this weekend it's opening week yeah. in baseball yeah. do you want to do some uh it's a quick world series division slash world series picks you just want to talk about baseball? I, I just want to talk about baseball. Yeah, like, we can – I mean, I – like, the Dodgers and the Blue Jays are the two best teams in baseball, personally. There's a little bit of bias in the AL, but <laughs> – Just a little bit. Um, no, I, baseball is going to be interesting this year. It's, it's a very polarizing league right now, I think. There's a lot of teams that are really good. It there's feels a, like a top heavy league, doesn't it? This year, yeah. Top, uh, yeah. I mean, polarizing in the sense that there's a lot of teams that suck and are highly irrelevant, and then there's about 10 or 12 teams that are really good. And honestly, all 10 to 12 of those teams have a shot at winning it all. So, we talked about this uh the other week, but uh, teams you can ignore this year. I mean, if you really want to be a baseball hardo, you could watch the Orioles because I think they actually have like some decent prospects who are kind of interested, but yeah. like. If you really want to be a hardo, you can like watch <laughs> if, the. If Orioles. you're an AL East diehard, then I think yeah. watching the Orioles is relevant. But if you're Other, not, otherwise, you can um, you can ignore Baltimore, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. I'm trying to think of it. Um, those are like Detroit Arizona. Tigers. Tigers are pretty relevant. Uh, they just traded for um, Austin Meadows. Austin Meadows, you're right. Okay, maybe they're not so irrelevant now. Um. The Oakland A's, you can ignore. Arizona Diamondbacks. Yeah, I think you could ignore them too. The rest of the NL West is kind of stacked. The Rockies, the the- well, the Rockies a little bit, a little bit uh, underwhelming, but the other three teams in that division are kind of nasty. So the Rockies, like, traded Nolan, Nolan Arenado to the, Cardinals. Argu- to the Cardinals like a while ago. That was two, like two years ago, I think. Yeah, like, Arguably, yeah. yeah. Arguably, the best third baseman in baseball, and, and I mean, defense and offensively, I feel like he could. You could make the argument, and then you just go and sign Chris Bryant to a big deal. Well, sure, Chris Bryant's no Nolan Arenado, but he's still pretty damn good. But then, why wouldn't you just keep 
Arenado? Like, because you don't want to pay the extra $10 million to keep, or 15 or whatever it is to keep Arenado? I feel like that, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, is is Colorado technically a small market? Because I think they are. They're not I guess, big, but like, but like, big, like, well, again, compared to St. Louis, they're not really a big market. I would say St. Louis is a bigger baseball market than Colorado is. Sure, but I feel like if you're like, what's an extra 10 or 15 or 20 million to keep like a fan favorite and a better third base? Could be a lot. It could, it could mean the difference between being in the black, being in the red. So, See, guess, ba- this is this is why uh, it's harder to make the playoffs in baseball. You have yeah. decisions like these. Um, um, teams you should be watching this year, uh, Dodgers, Blue Jays, Rays, the White Sox. White Sox, yeah. Um, White, I said White, White Sox, Red Sox, um, Astros. Giants too. Giants are pretty good. Giants, I, I I think they're a sleeper team, to be honest. I think they're a sleeper. Low key. I think think they were a, I think they were a one year. You think so? Yeah, I don't know if that team is really. I'd also throw in the Braves into that conversation. The Braves and the, um, the, Mets, the Mets, are, Mets. The Mets are nice. The Nationals. I don't know if you need to walk, look at all the Nationals. Juan Soto. You can at least just okay, watch yeah, Juan, Juan Soto. Juan Soto. He's a um, The Phillies. I feel like the Phillies. Like Phillies. The Phillies feel like are, a, they're, they're a lot like. Um, they feel like a sleeper team, but I feel like I've been saying that since Bryce Harper moved to Philadelphia. Yeah, I almost think they're kind of – I'm trying to think of a team. They're, they're kind of like every other Philadelphia sports team, like very polarizing players on their team. They, very they, like – you never know what's going to happen with the Flyers in a regular season and then playoffs if they get there. You know who they remind me of? The New York Rangers. Yes, actually, that's the team I was. I was, yeah. Ex- New yeah. New York Rangers, and it's finally working out for the Rangers this year. Um, right, is Bryce Harper the Igor Shesterkin of the MLB? Got to ask the question. It's more like a Panarin thing. He's like the Panarin, right? I think he's like Panarin. Yeah, yeah. I think that's um, yeah, pretty much. Um, I I would say watch the man. I listen. I think the Manners are going to be sleepers, but like. I feel like they'll they'll make the playoffs this year. I feel like it. I I'm I'm feeling it. I am. I think what the one thing we should do is like an, a biggie confidence meter over like the summer on the Seattle Mariners is like ranking my confidence. Uh, it's like instead of like you know at least in BC like the wildfire scale. Yeah. That's what I'll do about me on the Mariners. We should do like a weekly segment like Ian's. Ian's thoughts on the Mariners this week, how they're doing, like a little little mini update. Do like a big eats, but for the Seattle Mariners. But every a big week. eats on the Seattle Mariners, I like it. Yeah. While while we eating garlic fries. Big eats. Okay. Yeah, we do big eats on the garlic fries too. Um. Yeah. So, uh, I think my if you had to do a World Series pick, would you, who who would you? I think I'm gonna go Dodgers. I feel like everybody's gonna go Dodgers and like Rays or Blue Jays. I'm gonna say Blue Jays over Braves in six games. Ooh. Repeat of not okay. Ninety two was against the Philly. No, no, ninety two was the Braves. It was the Braves. Yeah, twenty years later, Blue Jays beat Braves in six games. Okay, because wasn't it? It was ninety two was the Braves, and in ninety three was the Phillies. Was the Phillies? That's correct. Yeah, that's right. I am a real nerd. Um, I am going to. I'm going to say the Dodgers over. I'm going to say the Chicago White Sox. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm going to say the Chicago White Sox come out of the AL, AL this year, okay. and and the Dodgers win in five. Yep. You know, I think the Dodgers are heavy favorites coming coming yeah. into coming into the regular season here. I think they're heavy favorites to win, and I think they're a better team than the Blue Jays right now on paper, especially with their pitching staff. I think it's the Dodgers versus every, every everybody else. Like it's literally LA versus everybody. Um, every, every week, every series the team's going to have circled is going to be that Dodger series. And it's how do we, how the fuck do we beat these guys? How it's do we pitch? How do we, how do we pitch to this team? Not very well. And you're going to yeah. walk half their lineup. Well, you should walk half their lineup, but um, yeah. that Freddie Freeman signing is really scary for that team. Yeah. Like, like, like nobody. And then the Dodgers like, yeah, we just signed Freddie Freeman. It's like a big ass contract. And it's just like, Oh fuck. Okay. Um, like, how did you do this? Yeah. 
Literally. So, so let me, I'll, I'll write that down just to, uh, just to remember. Uh, so you had uh, the, the Blue, Jay, Blue Jays over Braves? Blue Jays over Braves in six games, yep. Blue Jays over Braves in six games. Um, and I had the Dodgers over the White, White Sox in five. Okay. I like that. Um, do we think Vladdy's going to win the MVP this year, the AL MVP? I think it's, it, it's his trophy to lose at this point. Barring knock on wood and injury. I think Vladdy is. It'll be a Blue Jay, most likely Vladdy or Bo. I, I, I kind of think if Shohei can do it again this year. That's the thing. It's like when you have a guy like Otani. I just I'm baseball is so confusing to me because you're right. A guy like Otani or Trout should win it, but the Angels don't make the playoffs ever. Yeah, I know. Right, and the Blue Jays made the playoff. No, they missed by a game. They missed by a game, but they'll probably make the playoffs this year. They should make yeah, they should make the playoffs. And Vladdy should and Vladdy will probably hit 40, if not maybe even 50 home runs this year. Higher. Yeah. I you think we're they were were they getting higher? I'm thinking, well, we'll see, but I'm thinking he's gonna get at least 45. Okay. All right. Um so your hot take is that Vladdy hits 45 home runs this year. Yeah. What what's our what's our Kyle Connor uh bet for hockey now that the Kyle Connor bet's off? It, yeah, I kind of waved. Kyle Connor got COVID for – he's been out for a couple games, so we've kind of just yeah. waved. We'll I call was, that a wash. I, I was a little scared for a minute, not going to lie. but Yeah, um, because Kyle Connor was going to score 50 fucking goals. No, it wasn't, he, su- he, no, might, he might still, he actually. Hockey. He sucks at hockey. You called that off, so that's on you. No, I know, but I'm like – because, it, it, like, in fairness, I think we call it off. But um, my – okay. The manner – the man – the Manners are making the playoffs this year. Ten bucks says not a fucking chance. You're on. Deal. You're on. Deal. Deal. That's our Kyle Connor. Not a fucking chance. I actually kind of want the Manners to make the playoffs just for your sake, but I don't think they're going to do it just for the bet's sake. So, yep. Ten bucks. Mariners don't make the playoffs. I, I want that so bad. I'll make that clear. I do want them to make the playoffs just for your sake, but just so I can take ten bucks from you and – buy you lunch um i am <laughs> where can you buy lunch for 10 bucks these days el so, furniture oh that's yes el Ferni. <sighs> el Ferni is a good spot Let is there an that. el Ferni in Kelowna? no but there should be that'd be so sick there's one in whistler and there's there's one in vic i think too isn't there whistler in victoria there's an el Ferni. yeah, yeah. popular um, spot. That. two more things i want to discuss with yep. you and then we have a mail bag sure bring it um canada world cup uh oh, yeah. they are in group f yep group f with, with uh belgium, belgium croatia oh, and oh, yeah. morocco and canada's but yeah the fourth team in that pool so they'll probably miss the um quarterfinals like i like a, reasonably yeah. uh they'll probably uh play belgium and, or they'll, belgium and croatia will advance most likely uh barring I think Belgium's far and away the best team in that in that pool. Croatia is a sleeper, as you know, they went to the World Cup final last in 2018. Um, was that Croatia? Yeah, Croatia played against France. Luka, Luka Modric. That was the Luka Modric run, wasn't Luka it? Luka Modric is back. He will be the captain of the Croatian side. Luka Modric be like, I am back. What a <laughs> do, baby. Uh, but whatever that is in Croatia, I don't know what that is. That should be your homework. Learn how to learn how to do exactly what you just did. Speak Croatian. Uh, can I ju- can I just uh Duolingo Croatian? It's a it's a Slavic language. You never know. Um, yeah, that's that that would be interesting. Uh, so that's Group F. Canada's probably not going to make it out of that. Although no, we kind of we kind of cool they did. I think there's a chance of beating Morocco, and then the, if well, remember Croatia plays a pretty stuck system if if we can you know bury one and the Croatians only score one goal that's a draw and then you never know after that um, if you get a draw in a group who everything goes out the door who knows what's going to happen so i'm going to go th- we're going to go through these groups quickly here yep. uh group a qatar ecuador senegal and the netherlands which i'm pretty sure was just a uh country random country generator uh, which they put in for A because 
sure, I guess all these countries uh, qualify for, I guess all these countries are good at soccer. Allegedly, sure. I would say the Netherlands, hey, Virgil van Dijk is my uh, football, a footballer cop. So, um, like, allegedly, looks what, like, looks wise, people say uh, you look like Virgil van Dijk. Like, Playing, playing strategy, playing oh, stuff. Okay. Virgil van Dijk is my comparable. Um, I think Netherlands wins that group, and I think Senegal is going to be second. I'm going to say Ecuador for the fun of it. Um, okay. Is Robin van Persie still active, or is that a is that a is that a is that a bad? That was a that was a joke from 2014. Unfortunately, okay. that one just doesn't fly anymore. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. It's not like it's my podcast or anything. Um, group B, uh, England, Iran, the U.S., and UEFA Path A winners, which I so think is... that could be um, Wales, Scotland, or the Ukraine. So I would like again, it'd be really cool, a really cool story if Ukraine made that just because of what's going on. But mm-hmm. it also would be fun to see one of Wales or Scotland because I'd call that the con- the uh, Confederate group, or not Confederate, the uh, not not the Confederate, um, the uh, the com- the Commonwealth group because of all the Commonwealth countries in that group. I think that would be quite <laughs> in Do you understand that the U.S. is not part of the Commonwealth? Oh, yeah, wait, right, damn it. <laughs> I just think it's funny. U.S. is going to play England in a group. I think that's just very comical. Yeah, because, I mean, you would think the Americans would win that because we're playing soccer, and England talks about playing some football, but this is like a soccer tournament. I don't know. Um do you want to tell me what FIFA stands for? I don't know. French fries? <laughs> well, one of Fri- the... F- Fri- fried International... Fri- French well, International Fries yeah. of America? One of, one of... No. One of the Fs is football, and it is the FIFA World Cup. So you tell me what sport we're playing. I don't speak foreign languages. I thought this was established. I barely passed French. But you did pass French. I barely did. I had no business path in French, but I did. Um, we got you there, don't worry. We helped you out. I, I got carried in that. Um, group C, uh, this looks uh, like a messy group. Um, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and Poland. That is a messy group. Um, so, I think Argentina's got to win that group. You would hope. You would, you would think so with Lionel Messi. Um, you would think that the second spot is between Mexico and Poland. True. Yeah. Mexico is probably the better team, but Poland has Robert Lewandowski. Uh, this is me just working. This is just me working off my uh, minuscule amateur soccer brain. Um, I would say, Arge- I'm going to say Argentina and Mexico. I actually like Mexico. I don't know why. I like, I, I like, Mexico, they're, like they're a, good, they're a good squad, and Ochoa has been at seven World Cups now, so you got to count on that experience. I, I got well, I just want Mexico, like, I don't know why. Like, I know Mexican, you know, Mexico hates Canada, uh, Mexico hates um, the U.S., like the soccer team. Oh, well, no, yeah, no kidding, yeah, so they don't like you made them play in Edmonton in January, like, <laughs> September when it's minus 20. Well, when we look back on in history, like, that's gonna be like, I, I fucking love the fact that Canada's like yeah, we're going to use home field advantage. We're going to have Costa Rica and Mexico come play here in, in the cold in Edmonton. And yeah. while we're at it, Jamaica is also going to come to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, when it's minus 10. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys have fun. Yeah, but to be fair, we do have to go there and play in 30-degree humid conditions. So, What's, what's Estadio Azteca? Azteca alleg- yeah. Allegedly a tough stadium to play in. I've seen NFL games in there. It can't be that hard. Um, well, I've, seen, I, I've seen Brock Osweiler throw a touchdown at Estadio Azteca. Okay, it can't be that hard. Remember when Brock Osweiler's throwing touchdowns at football games in Estadio Azteca? In at soccer games, they're throwing flares on the field. So you tell me what's tougher. But um, yeah, I yeah, I, you got you got to see. I've never been to a football so, sorry soccer game. This is a this is Ian's podcast, um, soccer game, and I'd like to go to one, but I think it'd be an absolute riot. And Estadio Azteca, from what I've seen, would be an absolute riot. I, I actually would like to go. I think it'd be very like a, a genuinely good sporting uh, experience. Is going to see a, a, a Mexico national game there. I think would be uh, really exciting. 
Just um, be, I, be careful and bring a knife with you. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, if wow. You, dude, it's Mexico City. You can't be – you got to be safe in some of these foreign countries. You, you have not traveled very much, and I'll tell you that for free. I don't travel very much. I go down to the States every week. What are you telling me I don't travel very much? <laughs> I also, I, I also yeah. forget that Scott is Mr. Worldwide. Um, but at the same time, um, I can't wait till the World Cup starts and we become a, a soccer podcast, but it's like not a hard, like a hardcore soccer podcast for all the wrong reasons. Like, and it's going to be really funny because it's going to be like mid, we're doing it mid November in yeah. between hockey and football. And we, we, become, we become a hardcore soccer podcast for like a month. But not, but not for any of the good reasons. Like we just drink, we just complain about like, oh, this guy ruined my, you know, I bet on Portugal to win, yeah. and this guy ruined it. What a dick! Like what all the dick. reasons why that that's why. Yeah. What's um, our next group? Do we have group, group D? Group D, uh, France, Denmark, uh, Tunisia. How do you? Yeah, Tunisia. That's right. Yeah, Tunisia and the AFC Comma Bowl winners. That's uh, gonna be per- oh. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be either Peru, Australia, or Peru, uh, uh, Peru, Costa Rica, Peru, New Zealand, and TBD. Mm, there you go. Those are the three teams uh, fighting for that spot. Yeah. Um, so France is going to be winning that group. Oh, easy. And, and then Denmark will get second. I wouldn't sleep on Peru, but. If this oh, fuck off. Make- no, come on. No, fuck off. No. Guy went to Macho Beach you one time. It's like, <laughs> hey, Peru. They got a soccer team. That's funny. Um, no, I think you're right. De- Denmark's gonna win it, but it's gonna be close. That Denmark Peru game will be very good. I think Peru gave Brazil, Argentina some runs in the Cotton Bowl uh qualifying, but that yeah. sounded a, that sounded a lot like Cotton Bowl, and I just I thought of the stadium in Dallas, um, which that goes to show how much I know about soccer and how much I care about it. Yeah. Um, Group E, uh, Spain, uh, the CONCACAF OFC winners, uh, Germany in Japan. Uh, the key with this group is don't ask where they were between 1930 and 1945. Uh, it's a sensitive <laughs> issue. Um, Oh, and and the, the the fourth team is going to be uh um Costa Rica or New Zealand, right. um which Costa Rica actually like I feel like I don't know why I just feel like low key is like actually like decent at soccer. Not to say that they'll beat Spain or Germany. Um, Costa Rica just feels like a dark horse. I have no idea why. It's kind of a group of death, especially with Japan in that group. Kind of a dark horse team. That's what they were saying about that's what that's what they were saying about this group between 1930 and 1945. Yikes. Oh, I'm sorry for getting political on the podcast. My bad. Um is Spain good? Like I feel like Spain like won a World Cup and then they fell off. Is Spain good? That's a loaded question. Well, Yes, would, but also no. I would like to think so. They are. They were in the uh, first pot, so I would hope they're decent in qualifying. I think they're a good team. Um, again, I'm no super soccer expert, um, but again, this is a tough. Group. Can we? Can we? Gotta, can we? Can we start calling you that, Scott, the super soccer expert? Super Please? soccer expert. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I'll wear. I wear several hats for this podcast, but um, I'm Not a super. Once. I'm, Scott, the super soccer specialist that solidifies Saturday selections each Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> um, All right, Group G. So, or, uh, or, oh, I was going to say, so Spain and Germany and then everybody else, I guess, in that group, group, yeah. group G. Yeah. Or group E, we talked about Group F. Group G, um, Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland, Cameroon. Isn't there some political beef with Serbia and Switzerland? Allegedly, yeah. I feel like I read an article about that, like at the last World Cup, about how like these countries actually hate each other. We joke about Switzerland being a neutral country, but it's like they actually have like legitimate beef with like Serbia and like Croatia, Slovenia. Interesting. I wouldn't know. I uh, wouldn't know. Maybe it's the I... whole better versus Djokovic thing. That's why <laughs> <laughs> Switzerland and, and Serbia hate each other because <laughs> apparently they have beef. But... <laughs> 
who knows um no this is brazil's this is brazil's group to um ian still laughing off. um this is brazil's group to lose i think they're the first seed and then that second spot's gonna be who knows who knows um Probably so we'll I can't wait till Brazil uh, wins their group and then loses in the quarters because Neymar is a choker. Uh, Neymar is the um, Toronto Maple Leafs of soccer. Just him personally, he is the Toronto Maple Leafs of. I would even say, I would even go further. I would say, compare Neymar to Bryce Harper. Ooh, Maybe. there you go. That's that's a good comp. They both have nice hair. They both do have nice hair, and they're both flashy characters, and they whine a lot. And so. boomer and boomers hate them. I wonder if soccer. I wonder if soccer has like the same like you know old school versus new school uh, thing that like baseball goes to. Uh, although I don't know if they. I don't. We don't notice it in North America. I think that's that's most of it. To be honest, they're probably, probably. that like especially in like up in Europe and other places in the world. I think you definitely see more of that. Um, yeah, Brazil's group to lose them. Um. Switzerland had a, one of my favorite players from the last World Cup. I don't have many memories from the last World Cup. Um, one of my favorite players was Shakiri. I think it's his name. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Shakiri. yeah. Good guy. I liked rooting for him, even though, like, Switzerland was fucking boring as a team and they always played for a tie. Uh, he was always – I remember he was good. I like him. There, there there's go. my insight. Um, I think one of my memories from the 28 – one of my favorite memories from the 2018 uh, World Cup was um, grad weekend. And we stayed up, and we stayed up all night on the Saturday. Um, after prom, after prom, yeah. And we were up at like five in the morning, and there was a game on. I can't tell you who was playing. I'm gonna assume it was Croatia and somebody, and two, two nobody teams. Um, we watched kickoff. Yep. I remember there was a goal scored, and then the game was over. I don't remember anything that happened between the kickoff that's, and the end of the game. It except, sounds like textbook Croatian football right there. It, I think it was Croatia. I can't confirm it was Croatia because I may have had a significant amount of alcoholic beverages prior to that 5 a.m. kickoff. Oh, probably. I would assume so. Um, that's funny you say that. Yeah, I remember – I think we, I watched the grad, the, uh, not grad final, the uh, World Cup final – alone in a brown social house while you were working for the Victoria Shamrocks. I'm not sure if you remember that or not. I don't remember that. I feel like I was on, I thought I was on the ferry for that game. That was the weekend I came over, hang out at your, at your, uh, underground place in Victoria, your underground place in Victoria. Yeah. You were working for the Shamrocks and I was, what was I doing? I was just and doing our, stuff, but in our, in my fake casting, ca- you know, casting room, uh, Oh yeah, beat. I, I remember we'd we'd watch like reruns of Tosh Point you know, in that. In that was a great summer. Oh, that was a good summer. <laughs> um, and then uh, do we have one more fucking group? Jesus Christ. Um, Group H: Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay, and South Korea. Um, in group. You know, you know what I like. I I like. This is really sp- specific. I like groups with countries that nail all the con- like different continents i like a i like a you know a, a group with a country from each continent a highly diverse yeah i and i and, and we got that we have portugal we have ghana we have uruguay south korea we are nailing all the different continents here as someone who loves geography i like this group <laughs> i i think this is a cool group this is a cool um, very interesting too because there's no like i would say portugal is probably the best team in the group but it's, mm-hmm. they're not like a runaway favorite like France's for their group, right? It's it's a solid group though. I think Portugal. You're, I think those those are all tough outs. All th- all yeah. four of those teams are real tough outs. Agreed. Yeah. For what gonna, I know. Yep. Going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, and that's yeah, that's our our World Cup draw review. Um, I mean, you know. There, here's here's my my moral dilemma with this World Cup is the fact that it's in Qatar. Sure. Um, should it be in Qatar? No. Um, should thousands of people have died to build stadiums in horrible conditions? No. But you know what's great? Soccer. The beautiful game. It is. Yeah. The beautiful. 
it's going to be unique that it's in uh the winter like well our winter their summer or in like mm-hmm. it's still Qatar quote winter but it's going to be in a much warmer climate than where we are so i think it'll be really interesting to see what the visuals are like and what the what it's all going to look like i think it's going to be a diff- definitely different world cup than years prior which is very interesting but either way it should be fun um one more thing before we hit the mailbag we're running late with this pod but whatever it's not like i have finals this week and it's not like scott has anything to do um the masters is this week yep who's your master's pick i don't know i was looking at some odds earlier and like it's so golf's so hard to make an actual pick for a guy can I, can um, I, get, you got the masters right a couple years ago with Bryson, uh, with DJ, with DJ. You can I DJ just say, the masters. can I just say, um, I kind of just want to pick tiger just to see what happens. Yeah. Just to see like, cause apparently he's been like, he's played, he's played at Augusta today and yesterday. He's a game time decision for he's, Thursday in terms of if he's going to compete, which is, you don't hear that in golf very often, but. No, you don't because this isn't football or hockey or whatever. You don't have an injury report to fill out. But he, apparently he's hitting the ball really well. Apparently he looks really good from what I've heard. But, uh, why not? Why not Tiger? Like, w- would it be all that surprising if Tiger Woods, for all the shit he'd gone through this time, yeah. comes back and just wins the Masters? Yeah, it's there's there's definitely a chance. It, it's high, again highly unlikely, um, but again, who knows, right? So so if it's not Tiger, I have two guys who I actually like to win the Masters this year. Sure, bring it. Cameron Smith. Yep. Oh yeah, he's he's up there. He's in Fuego right now. Colin Morikawa. Oh, interesting. He's kind of due for a Masters. He has a couple majors. He's due for a Masters now. Yeah, I don't mind that, actually. He's kind of, and, like, yeah. he also doesn't feel like a guy who, like, the pressure gets to him. Like, he feels like he, like, he, feel like he has enough swagger yeah. where he can just, like, go out and play golf and just crush up the Masters. I mean, him and Hideki are very similar that way. They're both very, like, cool under pressure. I don't I mean, Morikawa's iron game is elite, and he's going to need that in this tournament, especially at a, at a course like Augusta that's going to play longer than it usually does. I think it's at 75, 75-10 instead of – usually it's, like, in the 7,400-yard range. But um, it's, it's lengthened a little bit, not much, but, again, enough to make a difference for these guys. And, no, I, I like that Morikawa pick. I think that's a good, that's a good call there. I feel, um, like you're, I feel like you're obligated to pick Scotty Scheffler just by name only. No, I'm obligated to pick Justin Thomas, and I think I'm going to mm. stick with it. I think he's my he's my usual pick every year, but I think JT's got a, you know, just you never know coming into um, a different, you know, coming into a tournament, guy might be coming off kind of cold, but then for the big stage, he's going to show out, and JT might be that guy. He's he's also due for a Masters, so he he feels like somebody who needs a big win. Agreed, and I think the Masters would be a great way to start the major season for him yeah. so i'll go more i'll but, go more kawa you go jt i like your cam smith pick though but i think jt's gonna win cam smith is like the hot pick agreed oh yeah like right. cam smith, no, no, cam smith. yeah which i don't know how that's gonna play like yeah. i don't know what the weather is gonna be like in augusta either this it's week, also but, hard to sleep on when we haven't even talked about john rom yet that's the thing about golf there's so many good golfers rom and dj and you know I, even, Spieth I was thinking about picking Spieth as my guy to win it all, but um, that'd be a nice redemption story if he could, you know, finally yeah, figure it out again. He's had some good showings at Masters his whole, whole career, so who knows what's going to happen here? Yeah, um, let's do a mailbag here, yeah. um, and then we we'll, we have a few things that we're going to mention at the end of the pod here. Yep. Yeah. So, mailbag. Um, we have. If this thing wants to load, doesn't seem to want to load. Um, apparently, I have no internet connection in my house. That's cool. Um, did you like the WrestleMania bit that I added? By the way, I thought you'd be all over that. You're a big wrestling guy. Oh, huge. Um, yeah, that's yeah. Stone Steve Austin uh, 
video reminded me of what you did this or this past summer <laughs> that was almost a year ago now can you believe that i know um yeah, that was a that was quite the moment i gotta say um noah noah rather he just said yeah. uh boom roasted so i'm assuming that was just in reference to me you know saying that you love wrestlemania questions oh probably yeah totally um did you even watch uh, you, you you probably didn't see any wrestling outside of what was on your instagram feed this week no okay that makes sense um breaking news scott is not a wrestlemania guy he was not wanting any wrestlemania questions in case you thought you were getting something different um raymond says uh ray mysterio the goat greatest to ever live i don't think that's true interesting i think i think um goat wrestlers you got to put stone cold and uh the the rock <laughs> yeah. chris jericho up there yep canadian yeah. guys you gotta support the canadian guys maybe triple h and maybe because everett's got a triple h line that i like triple h more but probably yeah it's gotta be it um who, who's your favorite wrestler scott is it pat like, mcafee after his performance this weekend yeah that was quite something um like john cena maybe i don't know randy We're, orton i feel like you're a randy been, orton guy yeah, Randy Orton, the RKO is still legendary to this day. Um, the RKO into the pool is, yeah, classic move. So, classic you wrestling see, you move. Don't, you don't see that much. Or like, we, we need to do more of that. Maybe if uh, we go to a lake or something this summer. If we have a lake <laughs> yeah. day. RKO off the Alice Lake dock. Who says no? Hell yeah. Off, <laughs> off the rocks. Off the rocks from 35 feet off the steel cage. <laughs> RKO. Um, I don't know if that's safe. <laughs> no, it isn't. But you know, in <laughs> wrestling, they also say don't try this at home, as if you aren't going to try it at home, as yeah. if you aren't going to try a stone cold stunner on your brother later on that night. No, you're you're going to do it. Um, oh boy. Uh, Fuji, uh, SYP creator Fuji asks, "What does WrestleMania mean to you, Scott?" Um, not a lot. I gotta say. <laughs> It's, it was one of those channels when we used to not have cable, it would just like be on Sportsnet after the hockey games. And it I, like, I was bored, so I would just watch it. Um, there's, I don't really have an emotional connection to WrestleMania, to be honest. It's fun to watch sometimes. It's, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun if I was really high and just, I don't smoke. So um, that, I, it, that, that's, that's pretty tough um you know i guess you could do edibles i guess i could do edibles but i just haven't so fair enough maybe, I, um, I need to, maybe if i need to relax more if i feel like i need to relax more i'll uh, take some edibles and there we go do a big eats on some, <laughs> some do you know actually how many people have been suggesting that to me oh probably tons yeah the weed guy is kind of tough but you know what can you do what can you do um Fuji also asked, uh, well, he asked three questions. I can't ask the third one. I don't know if you saw on Instagram what the third one is, but we, I can't ask that on the pod. Um, uh, Fuji asked thoughts on Morbius. Do you know what Morbius is? So, uh, let me know. I don't think I do. It's a, so it was a movie, I think, that came out this weekend, which, from what I saw, um, not good, reviews-wise. Right. Uh, a, a American superhero film based on a Marvel Comics character, Morbius, the living vampire, uh, featuring uh, Jared Leto. I don't recognize any of the other names. I'm looking on the Wikipedia. Uh, apparently, oh, apparently, it did 84 million in box office. I think this is opening weekend. That's a solid opening. Uh, Although it has a 16% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Interesting. Um, I need real movie experts to tell me if Morbius is good before I, you know. Yeah, I think I need to see people. first before I actually make a. And then well, like, I, 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 need, I need my movie people to tell me if it's a good movie before I say you should go see it. That's a good point. Because I don't, I, I'm, and I'm not a big Marvel universe guy. I'm not a big DC comics guy. 
Right. Um, so you're asking the wrong person in that regard. But um, speaking of which, Scott, have you seen any good movies lately? Any good TV shows? Uh, yeah, currently waiting. I haven't finished The Adam Project yet, but that's so far oh, 50, 50 minutes in. It's on Netflix. Really good movie. Mm. Um, oh my gosh, there's another one that I had. I just added to my list. Um, looks really good. Netflix is coming out with some bangers. Uh, Drive to Survive because you're a big F1 guy, so you've seen that. Dr- sure, yeah. Drive to Survive. Um, yeah, you, ha- you haven't watched that, have you? I have not. Um, I'm wait. I'm gonna watch the the con uh, the genius uh, the Kanye trilogy. I haven't seen that quite yet. I've just been busy with school. Mm. Uh, so I, I was watching. I was watching that with my brother recently. It was it was okay. Not bad. Hmm. There you go. Um, there's another movie that was quite good. Um, okay. We haven't talked about movies a lot, but Red Notice was really good when that came out. Um, I don't know Red Notice, no. Oh, it's with uh, Ryan Reynolds, uh, The Rock, and Gal Gadot. Mm. I think you should definitely give that a watch. It's on Netflix as well. Um, oh, I will shout out uh, 14 Peaks. It's a movie about a Nepalese uh, Sherpa that climbs 14 highest mountains in the world within seven months. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it, was, it was actually requ- required reading for one of my classes, but definitely a must watch. Uh, very cool movie. Um, and I took it. And part of it was myself taking an, an environmental physiology class and learning about what happens at altitude and how these climbers are able to do this. So that was pretty cool to watch that for sure. Um, have you seen Inside Out? No. Okay. Never mind. Um, this is this is a, a inside thing. Not in, different from the movie, but I'll, I could tell you about it later. Um, I haven't watched many movies lately. Um, I watched Goodwill Hunting recently, but like that's yeah. kind of that, that's kind of like obvious. Um, do I have any suggest TV shows? Um, I, I've been plugging this uh, a bit lately. I don't know if I told you. Uh, I've been watching a show called Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. Interesting um which is basically just like um if hell was like a corporate workplace with cubicles and like uniforms satan's the ceo it's a c-plus show and it's very niche but i think it's hilarious interesting there you go um and yeah fuji i can't ask the last question and i can't really answer uh morbius i've been told i've heard it's bad i've heard it's not good that that's my thoughts on that um scott yep we got a, we got a few things that we have to get you know we have to i guess announce or chat here yeah, yeah. um first uh we're going on hiatus spring break i would say hiatus. Gonna, it's not really spring break but hiatus is more you're not gonna be on spring break i'm gonna be on spring break sure um basically scott and i are taking two weeks off uh i have finals this week uh and then scott's got finals for pretty much the rest of his life um scott's got pressure all the time way more than i do and so basically we're going to take two weeks off uh, from recording the podcast um we will be back probably april 18th is our expected return date i was gonna i was gonna say the 25th okay done easy i probably the 25th is going to be our return um because we got to finish up school um yeah basically we're gonna be busy for most of april yeah um, but i think but i feel like other people are t- like i've seen some hockey people who are taking time off too so i don't think this is totally unreasonable um yeah. and we'll, be back- one, we'll have a good long episode that one we'll do a big recap of essentially the month of april we'll we'll basically just do um like what we do with the star wars episode where we just get drunk well not to get drunk but we just like chat for like three hours and then try and yeah. you know cut that down to an hour podcast i like it That's um it. That, was, that was a good show people like that one so people like that one uh so pretty much yeah so we're gonna be on vacation hiatus whatever you want to call we're gonna be we're on a break okay um yeah. as they say in friends uh we're on a break um i still love scott but I can't tell him that. Um, I'm afraid to. Um, for like the next two weeks, I am. Oh, the other announcement I was going to make. Uh, I'm on Jevin's pod this week. I'm on Left Side Heavy this week, so I'm going to record that on Tuesday. So check that out later this week. Very good. Um, we got to get another yeah. uh, round of round of golf. Players. 
I know. Well, I think Goff and I are going to maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, go to a Warriors lacrosse game. That'd be good. Um, so we got that plan. We'd love to do golf. It definitely feels like golf yeah, with, should, with the we weather. Should, we should go. We should go to their to, to their home venue if we get a chance, or we could come to Squamish because I I'm staff there again. So, but we didn't go to Squamish the first time. Well, I we went to Furry, but I was staff at Furry at that point. So, so what was it? I I played at the Jevin invited me to their like I played with him, Hayden, and oh, I can't remember who the other guy was. Yeah. We went golfing this summer, and I can't remember where the course. I mean, I know I remember where the course is. I can't remember the name of it. Right. Yeah. That feels like so long ago now, but I guess it's almost coming up to a year of that. Yeah. True. Jesus. I know. Time flies. Time, time flies when you're having fun. Uh. So yeah. So Scott and I are going to be on. Uh. On, we're, we're, Scott and I are taking a break. Um. We'll be back. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Final hot takes. Anything you wanna you wanna get off your chest here before we go? Hmm. I don't know. I gotta think about that one. Um, I got the dub playoffs come. So basically, my schedule. I got. Uh, I'm in Everett on Friday. Yep. If you aren't following the Silver Tips on social, do it. Um, you can see my best work. Uh, I'm gonna be Everett on Friday. Uh, Canada Sevens Rugby. Uh, so basically, Rugby Sevens is in Singapore this upcoming weekend. The weekend yep. after, it's gonna be in Vancouver. I'm gonna be there for that. So that'll be cool. Uh, and then the playoffs, WHL playoffs start on the 22nd, April 22nd. So basically, break, yeah, Holy. the playoffs are going to be starting wow. here shortly. Yep. Uh, so my life's going to be occupied here, uh, more or less for the next, uh, little bit. Um, Scott, what exam are you looking forward to the most? The most? Oh God. Um, probably my... Well, to be fair, I'm halfway done one of my final exams. It's a take don't you, exam. Don't you just love the school from home where you can just like take it and then submit it on Canvas at eleven fifty eight? Like, oh, I feel accomplished. Oh yeah, it's great. Nothing, nothing like the pressure of a, a midnight deadline and you're sitting at eleven forty and you're only halfway done. There's there's some real pressure on that one, but no, no, I like the six thirty one when you're like two beers in. It's like fuck. How am I gonna bullshit these next two paragraphs? Uh, <laughs> uh, I gotta write a conclusion in there. That would probably look good. Yeah, hmm. that's funny. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, it's probably probably the environmental physiology exam. It'll be a bit harder than the midterm, but should be all right. My exam schedule is pretty. Actually, sorry, scratch that. It's very mild compared to past years. I have mm. none during the exam period. My just this week is essentially hell because I've got like final paper and take home exam and um, final exam not in the exam period. It's on the last day of class type of vibe. Mm. So, so it's, bas- I, it's, bas- it's basically your school's out. Like basically once you do that, then you're all. Yeah, well, so after April 13th, I've got one thing due and it's a group project with my, one of my roommates over here and um mm. that should be lots of fun and yeah once that's done that's pretty easy and then we're we're done we're graduated we're living so then you're gonna just be uh partying going it's corral's not a thing anymore what what's the, the go-to well what's the go-to? Actually, well we're not sure about that yet corral might be Ooh. open once the vaccine passport thing drops and that's going to drop Ooh. on Friday. So we're so still, it'll open so, sometime in the next two weeks. So does the people who own Corral, are they anti-vax? Great question. I don't know. Um, or or they, they just, there's just not enough people vaccinated in the Okanagan to make the business right. That's probably more of it. Um, also might have to do with staffing issues um and the vaccine passport but again we gotta see i'm not sure um we went to gotham on friday with the crew that was surprisingly fun i'm not a fan of gotham but it wasn't horrible so um, is that a is that a goth place is that why you didn't like it no it's a nightclub but it's, it's a just, goth nightclub no no it's just it's oh. called gotham it's just a oh. it's like a basically like a pretty simple nightclub there's nothing too crazy about it so mm. yeah but what can I'm a, I, I was going to say that's probably a place where you meet goth people is that Gotham, but I, 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 you, re- you really are done with the dad jokes. I could tell it's been two hours. Uh, yeah, so again, 
Yeah. Again, again, check out my episode with Jevin. Uh, that'll be recorded Tuesday, probably out Wednesday. Uh, be sure to check that out. Um, be sure. You know what? We've created so many podcasts. I think you should all just go back and listen to old episodes and just hear like how much A, we've progressed, how much we've gotten better and how bad some of my takes were. I think that's uh, <laughs> what you should be doing. <laughs> that's funny two weeks are gonna fly by too like two weeks are gonna, it's gonna be nothing two weeks are gonna fly by they won't people won't miss us that much and if they really do like Ian said go listen to some old podcasts um what was what was a good episode i'm just trying to, the, the star the, the empire strikes back episode was really good i like the empire strikes back episode that was a good episode. um let me let me i'm gonna go through some of our old episodes and see which ones i i mean all of our episodes are great obviously there, there's um, some that really stand out though in my in my mind uh, um oh my gosh anything with fuji any basketball stuff is great the fuji, the fuji pods have been really good uh fuji pods are great um any episode with jevin uh, oh the oh the christmas the christmas one uh i'm not the expert on parking yep. that's a good one <laughs> Uh, where we talk about world, we, we preview the world juniors that didn't happen or at least happened for like a few days. Oh, fuck you, Chase Utley with my brother. I like that one. That's a good one. Yeah, that was uh, a good one. <laughs> uh, clickbait podcast with Ravisher, not clickbait, excuse me. We did that at SFU, so that the quality is actually good. Um, oh, our best podcast ever, <laughs> not clickbait. Not clickbait yeah, part that two. Was good. Uh, any of the redraft with Rab that we've been doing, uh, yep. good listens. Oh um, yeah, DJ Warren's underrated podcast was really funny. That was the oh, uh, go- yes, going back a long time with. Uh, I, was, I was like, yeah, 2020 now. Um, yeah, fuck, there were some good pods. Um, we're on a boat, both of them. Um, <laughs> we're on a boat. Uh, previewing every Olympic sport in two minutes or less. That's a great 20 minute listen. If you just want to hear us, uh, just, you know, talk about our experiences with Olympics and, and sports and what we knew about all the 2020 Olympics. Um, yeah. keep your peace podcast is funny. Keep your peace is funny. Yeah. That was um, good. oh, apparently I titled one Sweden and Slovakia are better soccer nations than Spain. So apparently Spain is worse than Sweden and Slovakia at soccer. Um, we haven't done a bachelorette podcast or bachelor podcast in a while. We need to do one of those. Maybe we'll do that when we get back, when we're done school. Uh, yeah. Talk maybe. to the girls and see. I know. We'll see. Uh, I get involved at all. So I don't know anything either. Maybe we'll just have the girls on the podcast. Maybe we'll let them run the show. They, they definitely could and easily should. Speaking of women running the show, uh, gaslighting, gatekeeping, and girl boss is another. That episode. was a good episode. Yeah, that one was good. We're coming up on a year on that. Um, there's a bunch of great episodes. There's a, like, there's a bunch there, of great episodes. Yeah. You so. you you have, you have enough to fill two weeks without uh, Scott and I. Um, right. With that being said, uh, we'll we'll be back in two weeks. See you then. Thanks for listening. Peace out.